Hi there, Andre here from Peak Motorcycles. Uh, today I'm out on something a little bit different. Uh, I'm out for a change on my 1250GS and I'm going to head up to Harley Davidson in Chesterfield to have a go on a road on the new Harley Davidson Pan America. Now those of you who have seen my off-road video that I did from the ABR Festival uh, will know that maybe I wasn't as kind about the bike as perhaps I, I might have been. Uh, I was really comparing it off-road to how my 1250GS or A1250GS performed at the BMW Off-Road Skills School and I did think that the Harley Davidson was not as good. And while I stand by that, it did also make me think about what I was really comparing it with. BMW have been making GSs for 40 years uh, so they've had a long time to tune and tune and tune and get it right. Harley-Davidson have just started, so for a first attempt, that's hardly a fair comparison. The second thing is the cost. So a reasonably spec GS is probably two to three thousand pounds more than the equivalent Harley. So again, comparing a bike that's three thousand pounds more expensive isn't a very fair test. And given that most people that buy the Pan America won't be using it as a trail bike, because uh, let's face it, it's something it will do rather than something it's designed for. And actually that new engine on road um, has got a lot more going for it uh, than you could use on a short track. Uh, on a test ride. So today I'm going to head up to the dealership, I'm going to have a go, I'm going to ride it around on the road and try and get a really good comparison uh, for how I think it would handle as a touring bike uh, for occasional off-road use. And the sun is out so it should be a fun ride up. So I'm here at Harley World in Chesterfield, it's quite nice to be back on this again. Uh, feels a little bit different to when I was out last time but let's see what it's like on the road. I think this will give me a chance to uh, stretch its legs a little bit. There's the indicator, there it is. So I've only been stopped here for a few seconds and I can already feel the heat coming up from that right hand side much like when I was on the, on the off-road ride. I'll tell you what though, this bike goes. <laughs> This looks like it red lines at 9,000 RPM, which for anyone who's ridden a more conventional Harley might sound quite, quite terrifying. Either that or you'll think it's not a real Harley, but you just feel this engine just wants to go and go. One of the guys on the off-road ride um, had commented that he felt the gear shift was agricultural. Now, I've got a 1250 GS and certainly the shift from first to second or from neutral to first is very much agricultural, but this bike, once it's moving like it is now, is just super light. The clutch is light, the action is light, the turn in for a bike as big as it is really is a lot of fun. And actually, it sounds pretty amazing as well. It doesn't quite have that thump of the that's more traditionally associated with Harleys, but there's certainly an edge to it. It's actually quite an easy bike to ride slowly. The uh, centre of gravity is, is very low and even though it has a fair old bit of weight behind it, it's not that different to the, uh, to the GS that has the engine slung low down on the bike so that once you're moving you really don't feel the, uh, the full weight of it. Uh, the suspension as well, it doesn't, it's not too soft, it doesn't dive unnecessarily, it doesn't feel like it wallows at all. I mean it really is pretty spot on. It's actually just a really fun bike to ride. Um, I've been riding now for about 15 minutes and a few things have uh, crossed my mind. So firstly, I've been hit in the face a few times by bugs. Uh, not a bad thing, especially not on a, a warmish humid evening like this to get a bit of air through. Uh, but the seat is on its lowest setting. Um, I think the screen must also be on its lowest setting because I'm getting, uh, not buffeting as such, but the, the windscreen certainly isn't uh, anywhere near my helmet. It's probably just above uh, the middle of my chest. There certainly seems to be plenty of torque in any gear, as you'd expect. So right now that's just uh, pottering along at 30 miles an hour. Third gear, 3000 RPM, very little strain at all. The stock exhaust on the bike isn't, isn't particularly loud either. I know that it's almost the trademark of, of Harley-Davidson that a lot of the, the cruisers have that real big V-twin throb about them, which certainly has a lot of character. Whether you want to sit on top of one when you're touring for several hours a day is another question. So the fact that they've done away with it on here I think would certainly help to make this bike more comfortable. Now this is 
just a comment because I've been riding my CRF 300 a lot lately um, and just doing two, two finger braking with the front brake. Uh, I can't actually do two finger braking on this because the lever actually catches on my, on my other two fingers. Uh, but that's just something I think I need to get used to. The dash seems to have an awful lot of information on it. Some of it is written quite small, and if you can see down in the bottom left there, uh, possibly not because I can barely see it. Uh, but nevertheless, it's uh, no, no less confusing, I think, than the BMW one, and I suspect it's something that you just get used to. Uh, the key bits of information, which gear I'm in, the fact that I'm in sport mode, and the RPM is all very easy to see and very clear. you give it some it really does sound amazing I'm guessing this doesn't have any fancy exhaust on it just a stock one uh, but it, yeah it just sings and it goes I do feel as though the bars are, are still a little bit low for me I could do with them just uh, rocking up a little bit but then again I have risers on my on my GS as well so I think that's an easy thing to to change just to make it a bit more comfortable if you're a taller rider so the road up through here it's not a bad surface but it is quite a bumpy road underneath it so hopefully this will be a good test of just what the suspension's like. It's just swallowing everything up. Uh, when I rode it off-road, I went over some dips where you did kind of feel them. I didn't quite bottom out, but it felt like it was getting close. Uh, I hadn't changed anything from the stock settings that it was set to, but it did feel a little bit soft to me. This feels very planted. And here we have a bit of unexpected rain. I do find the indicator switch slightly awkward to reach, but again, that might just be what I'm used to. I do find that I keep hitting the horn when I switch between Honda and BMW. Um, so I guess every manufacturer puts it somewhere else. Do about four and a half thousand revs in fourth. Let's see what this will do. Uh, either clear it or road ahead. Uh, or not. going to come off the main road here see if I can find a quiet spot Let's give you a, a closer look at it and have a bit of a walk around so then so that's about halfway out been out for about 20 25 minutes a uh, mix of a uh, few faster roads, but mostly country lanes, small villages. And yeah, it's just been really easy to ride. Uh, I find the bars a little bit low, but that's something that can easily be fixed. Let me just give you a closer look at it. So this one is all in grey. The ones that I was riding the other day, I think they had some green ones and the orange one. But I think in the black, it does actually look quite, quite striking. Uh, this particular one has got pannier racks on the back. It's got a top box that all looks very similar to my SW Motec gear. If you can see on this side, there is this big fan, this big open space. Uh, to get the air through on that side. It also has crash bars. It has this adjustable screen on the front um, and that quite distinctive looking headlamp. This one also has the extra the extra spotlights. Now this is the main source of heat so this is what I'm feeling uh, the side one I've been riding along and it's the the big exhaust pipe there but to be honest I didn't notice it other than that one time when I was stopped at the lights. Now uh, the pedals are all in a convenient position. There's a nice crash bar uh, just there to protect the exhaust as well. And this is just the stock exhaust, so this doesn't have anything, it's nothing special that's on it. There's a few other small features which I like. Um, you can see here that someone has already dropped that, that wasn't me for the avoidance of doubt. But what I did notice is that these just unclip like that. I suppose that means they, they come off uh, when they need to, and they just easily clip back on again. Trust me, that just went back on. The controls themselves, I mean there's a lot of them. It's one of those things I think that when you get used to a bike that you, you work out where they all are. The bike also has this big steering damper in there just to, to smooth things out but I haven't felt like I really needed it. Uh, the mirrors are pretty easy to see from. Uh, this is what I meant about the screens. It does seem to be fairly low but I think this is adjustable. Oh, there we go. Let's pull that up. Uh, so I'll ride like that for the way back just to see if that gives me a little bit more protection for where I am. Uh, looking at the back, uh, there's a big grab rail. Uh, for the passenger, it looks like a reasonably comfortable passenger seat, and this one has the Harley Davidson top box on it. Oh, 
and then time to head back. On the way back, I'm going to be riding mostly A road and then a little bit of dual carriageway just to get me back to the dealership, just to see what it's like on uh, that speed. I'm trying not to compare everything back to my GS because uh, as I mentioned earlier BMW have been doing that for 40 years this is Harley's first go at it um, I kind of miss having my GPS in a convenient place so on the GS it's quite high up it's above the irritating TFT dash uh, but it's just in your eye lines it's just a quick glance down uh, on here I'm guessing that there must be some way to mount it or maybe even the screen that's on it but that is definitely more of a look down uh, than I would have on my on my GS and I don't think it would easily mount further up on the screen. I still have a bit of a way to go before I get back to the dealer but given that the last bit is a dual carriageway which is a 70 mile an hour road here in the UK uh, which is probably going to be a little bit noisy and I'm not sure uh, how much the mic will pick up at that speed uh, I think I'll start giving you my final thoughts now uh, just while I'm out. So first up I think that this is more likely what the what this bike is going to be used for you know it's never going to be predominantly a trail bike and if you're buying one of these as a trail bike then well good luck to you as a touring bike i think this is quite compelling um you know i've been riding bmws on tours for the last uh, eight years and i do like the 1200 gs and the 1250 gs and I think they're great bikes, they sell loads of them, they're everywhere. That is also kind of one of the problems as well. You know, everyone's got one, or variations on that statement. So, yeah, I, you know, I would think about getting something like this. Uh, you know, I'd be interested to see what else it would, what else it comes with. Uh, I am missing a quick shifter on this demo bike, so I don't know if they do a quick shifter, but I'll certainly ask when I get back to the dealer. I think for what they charge, uh, they, they are pretty good value. I mean, I, I guess they know that they can't come in you know, charging more than what is already a king's ransom for a BMW and expecting people to uh, uh, to shell out the extra for something that's not tried and tested. But I think at the price point that they're coming out at, I mean, okay, they're not cheap, right? I mean, with Harley-Davidson, it's, uh, it's a lifestyle brand as much as anything else. Uh, but this bike seems to be really well made. I'd be interested to see what they're like for reliability. It is a brand new engine. Uh, so maybe there'll be some teething troubles with that, but that would be the same as you'd get with anything. Uh, I think BMW had some problems with a shift cam on some of the first engines that came out. So maybe there'll be something similar with this. Having said that, that's just speculation. That's, that's not a problem that it has. It's just a problem that it might have uh, being completely new technology. Having said that, the flip side of the new technology piece is things like it does have variable valve timing and it does have hydraulic lifters. So there will be no valve clearances ever to be to be checked and adjusted. It just adjusts all the time for you. So you know there's probably maybe some slight reduction in maintenance costs. Uh, all these things, you know, they're not they're not brand new. They've been around on other engines for, for quite a while. It's just the first time that they've appeared on a on a Harley Davidson. But yeah, I think it's uh, it's certainly a bike that I like. I'm really glad I got to ride one on the road. Uh, if you uh, are sort of interested, but the looks put you off then I'd certainly suggest trying to get down to your Harley Davidson dealer and seeing if they'll let you take one out because it really is quite a quite a revelation and quite unexpected uh, for, for the bike. Now I was quite optimistic about it so I was quite looking forward to riding one at the ABR festival and the off-road experience well not disappointing as such um, it didn't fill me with as much hope um, as I really wanted to have uh, for this bike. Uh, having said that now having ridden it on the road having ridden around some some little lanes I think as a as a touring bike, I think it's excellent. I think it's really, really good. Let's see what it's like on a dual carriageway. It just purrs off these corners, and it's just easy just to tip it in. And yeah, that, that noise, it's not traditional Harley Davidson, but it is quite fun. if you can hear that it's barely a click as it switches between gears that was from fourth down to third and this is uh, third down to second because the softest of clicks you know, I'm barely having to touch the pedal but it just it just clicks in very decisively okay then so this is the the dual carriageway before I get back to the dealer so it'll probably get noisy for a few seconds well, a few minutes 
see what it'll do. Okay, so I don't know if you can hear that, uh, if you can hear me. Uh, I'm doing just under 70 miles per hour. It's about 4,000 RPM, sixth gear. It's actually a pretty comfortable place to be. There's a little bit of buffeting off the top of the screen, but they're not loads. You know, it's enough to keep a bit of airflow through my helmet and not really to feel any on my body. And yeah, I think I could sit, sit here like this all day. Uh, the, the seat is something which you only really notice when it gives you pain. And I've been sitting on this bike for nearly an hour now and it still feels quite comfortable. You know, I don't know what it would be like at the end of the day because that's slightly different. Uh, but yeah, certainly for, for this ride, it's proved extremely comfy. It also has plenty of pickup in six. If you just need to uh, power past something exactly as you'd expect. I don't have the, the numbers uh, exactly to hand in terms of power and torque, but I'm guessing it's loads, absolutely loads. And certainly for driving at these sorts of speeds under these sorts of conditions, it's pretty much perfect. And yeah, there's definitely that growl that is quite tasty when you open it up a little. And even at this speed, which for the purpose of this video I shall call 70-ish, it's very comfortable. You know, I'm not catching up with that Mini ahead of me, so I'm really not going that fast. But, you know, I'm, I'm making good progress, and you'd easily sit at this speed on a European motorway where it's legal to do so. I think they have a 70 mile an hour limit as well. Yeah, I'd say it's just a very easy bike to ride. If you happen to watch my other video, especially the bit after the closing credits, you'll also know that they are fairly easy to pick up in the unlikely event you come off and you drop it. And actually, one thing that I've only really noticed just now is just how quiet it is. It really is just purring along now. I don't have any earplugs in, and all I can really hear is the, is the wind noise coming off the top of the screen. So it's only doing just over 4,000 RPM. So it definitely doesn't have that growl that I had earlier when I was uh, revving it a little bit more. But at this speed, it's just really comfortable. There's also very little vibration through the bars. Uh, so even on my GS, I do get a bit from time to time. It's never been annoying, but you certainly notice it. And anyone who's more, more accustomed to Japanese falls uh, will know that a GS feels pretty agricultural. And while this probably isn't a lot better, it's certainly very similar. And they sell loads of GSs. So here we go, nearly back. So it's just a... Uh, I left at this roundabout and then I'm, I'm back at the dealer. So yeah, that has been a huge amount of fun. Uh, I know they're trying to close at six o'clock, so I think they've got about two or three minutes after I drop the bike off before they'll be sh shutting up. So I will probably record my closing comments uh, when I'm back at home. So that's it, that's my test ride on the Harley Davidson Pan America. It was a huge amount of fun and as a road bike, I just thought it was great. Uh, certainly it's very similar to my GS. If I had to be really picky about the things I didn't like, uh, there was no quick shifter on it. Uh, I think that the display was fine, but there's some of the detail is quite small and not easy to see if you quickly glance down and I'm not sure where I'd mount a sat-nav. So if you're going to use it for touring, then I think those are things certainly worth considering. It did also produce quite a lot of heat. Again, not the end of the world. I'm sure all bikes produce a lot of heat. It just seemed to be more noticeable on, on the Pan America than other bikes I'd seen before. But yeah, really, really good fun. Uh, if you have a Harley Davidson dealer near, nearby that has one for a demo, I can definitely recommend looking one up. So yeah, I hope this video has been interesting and useful. If it has, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.